Hello, here's the key for the 7.1 to 7.3 quiz. So there's only six questions here. The first one has this data table right here. And we can see um, for the, the concentrations of X and the concentration of XY, what happens once it gets to 155 minutes, they stay constant. So what that tells us is somewhere between 75 minutes and 155 minutes, it's reached equilibrium because from 155 minutes on, now we have constant amounts of, of X and, and XY. And that's, that's, a, uh, that's a property of equilibrium, having constant amounts of reactant and, and product. So looking at our choices down here, we just wanna say which claim is most likely correct. Um, we can eliminate A, is, we can say, cause it's about to reach equilibrium 15 minutes. Um, well, at 15 minutes, and you know you go to 35 and see significant changes in the concentration for both so we're not at equilibrium at 15 minutes um, the the correct answer is B so we reach equilibrium some sometime between 75 and 155 minutes uh, because the concentrations of those those two components remain constant um, in letter C it says the reaction did not reach equilibrium well it did because we can tell because of the constant amounts D also says the reaction did not reach equilibrium, so that eliminates C and D for us. Okay, question number two. All right, now this is a, a representative of what's going on with the reaction. We have uh, this reaction X plus Y is producing XY, uh, and we can see we're, we're just starting off with X and Y at time zero, and we have XY molecules. This, this molecule XY is starting to be produced at time 100. So it starts off, the, the forward reaction is going to be faster than the reverse reaction to begin with um, because we can tell that because we're losing amounts of reactants and we're gaining more products. So the forward reaction has to be going faster. Um, but then once we get to time 200, now we see constant amounts in this one because there's, there's one, two, three, those XY molecules we go to time 300, we have the same amount, one, two, three amounts of the XY molecules. And then the two reactants are staying the same too. But from time 200 on, now it's showing that we have constant amounts of reactants and products, and, and that's a property of being at equilibrium. So now we can look at our choices right here. And the question is, which of the following is a characteristic of a system at equilibrium that is best represented by the particle diagram? And looking at the choices, let's see. So A, the particle diagram shows that initially the reaction proceeds to the right to form product, which is true. Uh, that's a, the characteristic of, of a system at equilibrium. Um, it's not equilibrium initially because the forward reaction is faster. So this part is, this part is false. That's not a characteristic of a system at equilibrium. So proceeding to the right means it's not in equilibrium and it's trying to get there. So choice B, the particle diagram shows that after 200 seconds, the rate of the reverse reaction is slower than the rate of the forward reaction, um, which is a characteristic of a system at equilibrium. This is also not a characteristic. The rates would be equal when you're at equilibrium. And the rates are, the rates are equal once you get past 200 seconds. And you can tell that because you have the constant amounts of reactant and product. So letter C, the particle diagram shows that after 200 seconds, there is no observable changes in the amount of reactant and product, which is a characteristic of a system at equilibrium. So the answer is letter C, constant amounts, that is what, that is what we have at equilibrium. Uh, letter D is wrong because zero to 200, the forward reaction is faster. This is saying, they're saying that they're both the same rate. So D is wrong. So the answer is C there. All right, number three, now we have a, a graph representing concentration versus time. And you see at, at T1 through T2, the concentrations level off. So we have constant amounts. So you're starting off with just N2 and H2, and we have no NH to begin with. The reaction is right up here. So initially, the forward reaction is going to be faster than the reverse reaction. And we can also see that H2 is going to get consumed faster because it has a coefficient 3 right here. So H2 gets consumed faster. 
uh, N2 also gets consumed, but by the time we get to T1, everything is leveled off. We have constant amounts, so that means that we're, we're then at equilibrium at T1. So the question is, which of the following was true for the system between time T1 and T2? And we can say that the, the correct answer is D. The rate of the forward and reverse reactions were equal. So once we get constant amounts, we can say that the rate of the forward and reverse are equal. So D is the correct answer there. All right, question number four, similar graph. We can see it level off at, at time 60 seconds right here. So we're starting off with this N2O4 and it's producing NO2. So initially the, the, the reaction is right down here. So initially the forward reaction is faster until we get to equilibrium and then those two rates will be the same. So the question is for this one, which of the following um, identifies when equilibrium is first reached and provides a correct explanation? Well, we can just look at when does the concentration level off and that's gonna be at, at uh, time 60 seconds. So we can look at our choices right here and the, the correct answer has to be D. Concentrations remain constant forward and reverse reaction rates are equal. So D is the correct choice there. Okay, question number five. All right, similar to the one we saw before where we're making, um, we have X and Y as our two reactants and we're making these XY particles. So we start off at time T equals zero. All we have is our X and Y reactants. We don't have any of the XY molecules. So as we get to 100, now we have one of these XY molecules. When we get to time uh, 200 seconds, now we have one, two, three of those XY molecules. So in this area, it's showing that the forward reaction is going faster than the reverse reaction because we're getting more product and less reactant. Now we get to time 300, now we have even more of those XYs. We have one, two, three, four, five of those XY product molecules. So we go from zero to one to three to five. So th throughout this time, we can see that the forward reaction is faster than the reverse reaction. So the question here is, uh, we have equal molar mixture of X and Y. It's placed inside a rigid container at constant temperature. The particle diagram above represents the changes that occur over time. Based on the particle diagram, which of the following best predicts whether or not the system has reached equilibrium by 300 seconds? Okay, now with this, it may have reached equilibrium, but we can't tell because um, we don't have another data point right here. Like if we had time equals 400 and we had the same amounts of X, Y, and X, Y molecules, then we'd know that it's at equilibrium. But without that information, we can't tell. All, all we can tell is up to this point, we're getting more of the XY molecules. We would need more information to tell if, well, now it's leveled off and it's reached equilibrium. So uh, the correct answer has to be B. It is not possible to determine that the system has reached equilibrium by 300 seconds because the amounts of XY and XY have continued to change. So again, if we had another data point at time 400 seconds and everything remained constant, then we'd know, but with the data that we have here, we can't tell. So the correct answer is C. All right, and then number six. Okay, so with this reaction, we have 2X plus Y2 equals two of these XY molecules again. So at, we just wanna look at, well, how many of each of these molecules do we have? So at time, one, we have one, two, three, four of these Y2s. We have one, two, three of the Xs. And we have one, two, three, four of the XY molecules. Compare that to time two. What happens is now we have one, two, three, four, five, six XY molecules. And we only have one of the X molecules and we just have three of the Y2 molecules. So what's happening from time one to time two, the reaction has shifted to the right and produced more product and less reactant. So the question here is based on the diagrams, what can be inferred about the relative rates of the forward and reverse reactions between time T1 and T2? 
Well, if we have more product and less reactant, that means that the forward reaction had to be going faster. So looking at the choices here, uh, letter D, the rate of the forward reaction is greater than the rate of the reverse reaction. So that has to be the choice right there because now we have more product, less reactant. So the forward reaction must be faster. All right, so that's letter D. All right, and that's all for that quiz. Have a great day.